Hi, I'm David Rutter, soca artist, and whenever I'm in New York, I always tune into Culture Share. David Rudder, one of the top Calypsonians in the business these days. Once again, you had a, a mega album, and from that album, Dust in the Face. That's right. The origin of that topic. Well, basically, um, Pelham, um, Pelham Goddard, who arranges for Charlie's Roots, my band, he, um, he also arranges for a steel band called Exodus, and they won the Panorama the year before. And uh, he, he wanted to do next a new song for his band, and he, he just mentioned that his... His, he's, he's a race horse man, and he said, well, his horse kicked dust in the other horse's faces. So I just used that theme to um, talk about the rivalry of the different steel bands in Trinidad and in their panorama competition. And that's where the song came really, that's where it, you know, it really gelled. I would like to describe you as a philosophical artist. And immediately, 1990 comes to mind. Is this you by nature? I think, um, yes, I think uh, all I've, 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 I've absorbed in my growing years, you know, it's, uh, I, it's coming out now. I think that um, I have learned quite a lot from this life and um, a lot of it reflect, is reflected in my music. You are a very topical performer. You have a, a wide range, a variety of topics um, and very serious ones indeed. I cannot describe you as uh, a soca man, even though maybe you would like to describe yourself as a soca man. I would say you're a Kaisonian. Do you think this is correct? Well, I'm part of the whole, the, the whole tree, actually, because, um, I mean, 1990 is, in a sense, soca music, because it, uh, soca music basically was created um, as a hybrid between uh, of soul music and calypso music, singing the lyric of calypso with feeling. Whereas before it would just be a narrator saying the words to the audience. Soul Calypso reminds me of Shorty there. So Soka originally meant singing the same Calypso topics, but with a certain amount of feeling that people would feel what you're saying. That's um, what is known as Soka now is just basically the party aspect of the music. That's just one branch of it. But I, I would say that um, I am all of, you know, Calypso, Calypsonian, the Soka man, everything in one. Do you think there is a need for more meaningful lyrics. When I say meaningful lyrics, I'm thinking of social commentary in soca. The reason is that the party type music seem to be um, taking the world by storm because of the economics that dictate that the artists sing party type calypso. But do you think there is a, a, a much more need for this kind of social commentaries in soca calypso? Yeah, first of all, party music don't really ain't take no world by storm, you know. Well, when I say world, let me say that the, yeah. the, the, communal, the communal indigenous Caribbean in the Caribbean, New York, English yeah, world. Yeah, That's yeah. what I mean, yes. Uh, yeah, and even that, even so, um, it is like very few. It's like if you 500 party songs are released each year, six or seven might be successful out of that 500. So even as an economic tool, that doesn't really um, hold much water. But it gives that, that, that five or six people in those people a chance to um, make some a little change for the, for the, until the next carnival or so. Because, um, you know, like, Calypso music travels in a very insecure kind of world where you have to come up with something in, ne in the next nine months or else. You know, because, like, I've just finished my, my, my new album and people are just saying, um, when the next album coming out? It's like if, you know, it's like there's dust in the face played for carnival or so, but there are nine, eight other songs on the album that haven't been even touched, you know, and basically what, what the fine artist is just doing is um, a, a, a just doing things to survive. So they might do one song and hope to, for the best and next year we do an, another one. But basically it's a very hit and miss kind of thing, you know. I think that if people realize that we need to aim for real standards and, you know, say something, I mean, a, alongside the very light, light-hearted kind of songs, then this is how the music will, will go forward. But if you just deal with one aspect of it, it just um, travels in that short space and, and peters out and disappears and people looking for something else again. It's like throw, throw away music. So when would Calypso actually take the world by storm? When will it break? When would a major record company take Calypso in their arms? When would Calypso be in the Grammy Awards, for instance? When it will become worldwide? Well, what is wrong with the art form then? Well, look at this. I've been signed to a major record company for six years. I mean, Arrow also. Um, and, and we just we we are well known in many parts of the world, yes, but within a sort of like a world beat sort of thing, and you know it's, it's not very, um, it's not like how they would know a, a rap artist or so on, right? Um, I think the music is too personal. 
and this is one of the things that um, record company, companies look for. They look for um, things that they can attach attach a value to, to in the sense of um, they can sell a, a culture behind. Um, if you if you have you have reggae music, and you you see some you know reggae music is aligned with Rastafarianism, marijuana, ice green and gold. It's a, it has a whole thing. Rock music is is aligned to um, black leather and long hair and tattoos and acid and so on. Rap is aligned to um, Malcolm X t-shirts, hats pulled on the side, gold chains. Just, everything is, has a certain um, thing that the record company would say, well, yeah, we can sell that. Now, if you see David Rudder, Shadow, Sparrow, Kitchener, Walking on the Road, it's just four guys. Because Calypso music is very individualistic. It's each a person's opinion. So there's no distinct form in, 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 in the music, in the sense of, it's what I feel and what Shadow feels and what Sparrow feels and what Kitchener feels. So is it wrong to sing this kind of Calypso? No, that is how the music is. It's not about singing a type of Calypso. I think it is about the fact that it comes from a, soci a society and an, an, and an environment that deals with individualism. It's like if you go to a Calypso 10 and you have 20 singers, you have 20 opinions. You know, there's no um, real, I mean, they might be dealing with the same topic, but it's their, their, their slant in that same basic talk, topic. So it's not the topic that it's, it's about. It's the culture it comes from. It's a very individualistic kind of, of art. Caribbean media is, a, is the Calypso art form's worst enemy because we do not hear a plethora of our music played on the radio in the Caribbean. Do you agree with me? Yeah, this is a, this is a problem all over because, um, I mean, right now, the whole um, Caribbean system is being fed from a North American standpoint. It's like a lot of cable television is coming in and so on. And um, there's a very, sh a very small amount of um, programming done on Caribbean artists. Um, you know, it's except, you know it's except, except when I go to places like Antigua and so on and Grenada and so where you might find um, there's a certain amount of of um, Caribbean music being played. Um, not, I'm not only just, I shouldn't say just Caribbean music, but um, dancehall music is played quite a bit. Um, Soca and Calypso music is um, not played as much as. But I think what, what, what bothers me is the fact that um, a lot of our youngsters are, very, are now being fed so much through that satellite thing that they, they're sort of losing um, their center, so to speak. Also, something I, I noticed in the Calypso world is that a lot of our par the parents are not giving the children a chance to create for themselves. What they do is, like a, in, in the Calypso world in Trinidad, I find there's too much of parents writing the, the ch songs for their children. We lose the kids around the age 12, 13, because by that time, the parents have stopped writing for them, and they now have to create on their own, but they don't know what to do, simply because they have never been given the chance to express their own feelings, you know? And I think that is something also we have to um, address. David, let me say thank you very much for being on Culture Share. It's a pleasure having you. It's my pleasure. And keep on All progressing right. and struggling with the music. Okay. We need you. All right, brother. All right.